And as we try to figure out where we go from here, a lot of people have been talking about higher volatility potentially coming as we hear more from the Fed. One of the people who studies that very closely is Stuart Kaiser. He's UBS head of equity derivatives research. Stuart, it's good to see you. One of the charts that you sent to us has to do with sort of the relationship between the VIX, the S&P 500, what is it implied in the VIX and what actually happens. And the way I read this chart, and perhaps I didn't read it correctly, is that the VIX doesn't really predict that well or as well? I don't know. Is this? Am I reading this correctly? Um, hey, good morning, Julie. Hey, look, I, the, the VIX is, I guess, the market's best guess at where volatility is going to be. Um, it's also not directional, I think, which you know, which catches some people by surprise. I would say where we sit today is, you know, the VIX has come off a little bit of where we got last week in the FOMC. Um, it's it's pricing a fair amount of risk both today and over the next three to six months, and I think from our perspective, it's it's that next three to six months part that's probably the most important. You know, the the front of the curve, the spot VIX, is going to move based on what the S and P is doing on a given day. But those longer term VIX futures are giving you some sense for how much uncertainty the market expects over the medium term. And I think if there was one takeaway from the Fed is that there's a lot more uncertainty about what that base case is, kind of three to six months out, and we would expect that that part of the curve, that part of the uncertainty pricing to remain a little bit elevated as the market kind of tries to digest exactly what they heard last week. And, you know, Stuart, we've talked about this a couple of, of different times over the last few months, but um, as you look out over the next few years, I mean, is that environment that we were in for, for so long, 17, 18, even go back, you know, 13, 14 of low teens VIX for a long time as people just bet on low vols. Do you feel like that environment is on the horizon here or has the pandemic and, you know, the way the VIX curve changed during that event, you know, set things maybe a little higher here for the foreseeable future? Um, look, I think I think for the balance of the year, you know, our view was VIX averages 20 to 22 in the first half and kind of 16 to 18 in the second half, um, with that second half kind of having a little bit of event risk baked into it as well. But ultimately, what determines the VIX is, is how volatile the S&P 500 is. And, you know, what we saw ahead of the FOMC is you had realized volatility on the S&P in the in the 5% to 10% range. So I don't think it's without, with, you know, outside of the question that the VIX would get down to those teen levels. And, and we did see a print 15 a couple weeks ago. So I think the front can get down there. I think you know, there's two questions. The one is how sustainable that is. And, you know, last week we saw that, you know, that calm can be sort of flirting with you, but that, then disappear. And the second is, again, you know, how, how does the market think about the three to six month period. So I think, again, that three to six month period stays high. But, you know, I don't see any re reason why the VIX can't be in the mid-teens again in the second half of the year. Um, I think most investors would view that as a as a buy um, because of the amount of risk that's bouncing around. But, you know, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that we could get back down there. There we have the uh, opening bell on Wall Street as the market tries to claw back from uh, really some heightened volatility like Stuart was just talking about after that that Fed meeting last week. Stuart, you mentioned in your note that folks should start positioning for a, a just a, a move forward or move higher in, in large cap U.S. tech stocks. What's the trigger for that? Because I, I'm not hearing a lot of folks position for that trade right now. <laughs> Look, I, I, our view is essentially that once you got past all of this macro data, you know, that being, you know, the employment report, then the inflation data and then the FOMC, the market would start to reorient itself to 2Q earnings. And, and we do think 2Q earnings are too low and need to be revised higher. And what we've seen the last two quarters is tech actually performs generally quite well during the heavy part of earnings, because frankly, those are the companies that are, are that are generating strong earnings. So I think you know, there's two reasons to like tech here. One is the fundamental piece, which I just went into. And the second would just be that tech doesn't like inflation very much. And I think that's one of the reasons it was under so much pressure, you know, a couple months back. But tech actually deals with higher real yields a little bit better. And, and coming out of the FOMC, that, that's the mix we're seeing in the market, which is inflation expectations and break evens lower, but interest rates higher. And that's actually a bit better for tech than it is for something like small cap. So, you know, from my perspective, the fundamentals, I think, are going to help tech over the next, call it, you know, four to six weeks. And I do think the macro setup is, uh, if it's not favorable, it's less of a negative than it was a couple of weeks back. And Stuart, another group that I know you've been watching the options activity on is energy. Um, obviously, we have seen underlying oil prices go up. We've seen energy stocks recover to some extent. And it looks like there's a lot of options uh, linked interest in the group as well. So what happens next there? 
Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, energy materials and even financials to some degree, we had seen a massive uptick in the amount of options trading and particularly to the upside. Uh, the last week or two, a, a lot of it has started to back off in terms of both energy and materials. And I think that's the whole inflation story. You know, it, when inflation was rising, people wanted to own those commodity sectors. Now it seems like the Fed is was paying a bit more attention to inflation than maybe we feared they were. And and the options activity in, in energy and materials has, has come down pretty substantially. And, and what we're seeing is a little bit of a rotation into tech. So I think the question is going to be here is we were priced very dovishly going into the Fed. We appear to now be priced quite hawkishly. You know, clearly the the right outcome is somewhere in the middle. So, will energy benefit from a rebalancing of those expectations? I, I, potentially. I think right now, though, what we're seeing is is people are readjusting their expectations, a little bit less excited about those quote unquote reflation sectors, and, and maybe focus a little more on on tech at the moment. Yeah, equilibrium is sometimes difficult to come by when it comes to equity markets. Thank you, Stuart. Appreciate it. Stuart Kaiser is UBS head of equity derivatives research.